Harry, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm just fine, and I'll stay that way if you lay off them stale jokes. <laughs> what a card, stale jokes. <laughs> That's a good one, that is. <laughs> Them kids again, they're nuisances. The tops clearing of rosy London bridges falling down. Boys and girls together, me and Mamie O'Rourke. Trip the light, fantastic on the sidewalks of New York. East side, west side, all around the town. The top Seven, eight berries. That's two something apiece. Gee, Ross, was I scared. You shouldn't have done it. We don't want any part of it. Ah, don't be dumb. Here, Mary, you go over to Bazanna's grocery and ask him to break that five spot so as we can divvy. There they are, that's them. Gee, you're fun for it! No, you don't. Let me go, you flat foot cop! child arrested as a common thief. Tush, woman, there's no cause for alarm. I've already spoken to the mayor. Bluff. That's all you are, bluff. It's a fine lot of good you'll be doing that, child, with yourself smelling like a saloon. Uh, I should like a true bill of particulars setting forth the nature of this charge. And who are you? Ulysses Sylvester Rogers, father of this little child who stands before this bar shamefully accused. If it please, Your Honor, according to the Bill of Rights, and the statutes of the great state of New York. This is a... It'll please my honor if you remain quiet for a moment. Um, Your Honor, I'm intending to take my little girl out of this unhappy environment immediately. I'm going west to start a new life. Perhaps that would be better for both of you. You are the little girl's aunt? Yes, Your Honor. It is the opinion of this children's court that Mary had better remain with her father for the present, pending investigation by the Geary Society. Come. Michael McLennan. We have no previous record against your boy, Officer McLennan. So I'm going to dismiss the charges and place him in your custody. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm taking him right down to have a good talk with Father O'Shea. Ross Hadley. Now, this young man, Ross Hadley, has a very long record. Truancy. Petty thieving. Malicious mischief. He's no good, Your Honor. No matter what I do, he's just a no-good little crook. You're a bigger crook than I am. Why? Keep your hands off of the boy, Hadley, or I'll hold you for contempt. Now he's going to wind up in the electric chair, that's what. Enough of this. Under the circumstances, I'll have to place him in a corrective home for boys. Now, the sooner the better. It's all right with me. Reform school? Don't let him see you crying, Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, place your bets, please. There they go. 24 black. 24 black. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Dorsey. That's all right, Ross. There's plenty more where that came from. Well, that's, uh, that's good to know. <laughs> Aren't you playing, Mrs. Lawrence? No. I've had enough. Place your bets, please, ladies and gentlemen. 
Place the best ladies and oh, gentlemen. Good evening now, Ross. Oh, thanks. There they go. Where the little ball falls, falls the fortune. 31 red. 31 red. Ross, darling. I've got to check in, Faye. Oh, well, you'll come back and have a drink with me, won't you? Sure. Oh, you're a funny guy, Hadley. What do you mean, Chevy? Well, he, you've been working for me for two years now, for peanuts. All the time, you could have been living off the cream. <laughs> yeah, for instance. Oh, you could have been treating Faye Lawrence a little cozier. You know who her husband was. Biggest bookie at Sheepshead Bay until the boys croaked him. She's still making a good thing out of that book. Well, maybe I'm just giving her a build-up. <laughs> well, it's cockeyed. No, I'm disappointed in you. I thought if you hung around here and kept your eyes open, you'd learn a lot. Well, I've been learning, Chappy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to work for those peanuts any longer. I'm quitting you. Quitting me? Yeah. What for? I'm figuring on opening a bigger place that's going to put you out of business. Oh, and just what are you figuring on using for money? Faye Lawrence. Faye Lawrence? Mm-hmm. Well, does she know? She doesn't know, Chappie. But like you said, I've been learning. And tonight I figure to graduate. You've been working too hard. Why don't you hit Chappie for a vacation? I'm going up to Saratoga for the season. Well, I can. I've got to see some people on a big business deal. What kind of a deal? I'm getting backing for a spot of my own. Couldn't be that Miss Darcy who's been shoving your chips around the last few nights, could it? <laughs> could be. But I said some people. How much is she? I mean, uh, some people willing to put up. Oh, 25,000 for the gambling end. And I can promote concessions for the fixtures and things. You need more than that to buck Chappie. What would 35,000 do for you? Give me the biggest play in town. Well, let's get out of here now. We can settle the details with my lawyer the first thing in the morning. All right. I'll, uh, I'll see you at breakfast. I've got a date with a politician. A blonde? No. No, he's big and bald-headed and has a cigar in his mouth. All right, Joe. How did I do? Oh, great. You're a wonderful actress, Bonnie. You ought to be with David Warfield. Thanks. Did she fall for it? Yep. <laughs> for you? For you. Well, this calls for a little celebration. Hey, Joe, this is where I get off. Wrong. Some other time, Bonnie. I got a date with an alderman. What's this alderman got that I haven't got? A drag with City Hall. You're talking to the guy that's going to have this town eaten out of his hand. I heard an animal trainer say that once about a lion. He lost an arm. <laughs> You're a sweetheart. Chappie, will you listen to me just a sec? Look, Chappie, I want to explain one deal. Look, if you'll only listen, just... I tell you, let this guy and girl drag the suckers in, and when she gets through, they'll cough up everything, including their gold filling. What guard a girl? What guard a girl is only one guard a girl, Chappie, by Parker. She got Chicago Daffy. They tell me that place Russ Hadley is opening up is going to be a Lulu. Yeah, yeah, I heard. Sounds wonderful. Food and entertainment, besides gambling. You see, what was I telling you? Look, Nicky, skidoo, will you? I've got troubles enough now. There's a double-crossing slug opening up just down the street from me. Go Why on. do you think I'm trying to sell you this attraction? Well, I guess you ain't interested. Maybe I'll go down and give this guy Hadley a glim at this. Just a minute, Nicky. I owe you a favor. Maybe if this garter girl doesn't come too high, I might give her a break just for your sake. I appreciate that, Chappie. But she comes high. Let me see it. Chappie? Hmm. Vi Parker, the Gata girl. And very nice, too. Hold me just a little closer. Hug and squeeze me. So that's fine. Rest your head upon my shoulder. Now press your lips. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Cappy's really 
got himself an attraction, Ross. More curves than Christy Matheson. <laughs> You know, it's a funny thing, but she, uh, she reminds me of somebody. They all remind you of somebody. You ever been to Chicago? No. She was big time out there. She was. How do you like her, Mr. Misney? I'm not my wife, but oh, you kid! Counselor. Oh, well, of course, she's a great artist, my dear. There's a question about that. But it's due entirely to my handiwork. Because without me, the girl would be nothing. Nothing at all. Ain't she the lucky one? If someone would only take an interest in my undeveloped talent. Old man Rogers. Hold me, hold me. Mary Rogers. Just a little closer and I'll show Oh, I'd love to, but Mother says I can't. All right, gentlemen, all right. Miss Parker has a change to make, sorry. Uh, well, thanks for running interference, but uh, as you say, I have a change to make. Oh, you don't know me. Well, if you're Santa Claus, you forgot your whiskers. <laughs> Think a little harder, Mary. Mary? Oh, I'm fine. And you, well, you're just beautiful. So look, Mary. No, no, no. Uh, Call me Vi. I'm more used to it. All right, Vi. Put some clothes on, will you? I want to give you a ride in my new gasoline buggy. Oh, Ross, I'd love to, but... Oh, I've got another show to do in two hours. I'll get you back in plenty of time. we got a lot of catching up to do. Hurry up. Come All on. right. <laughs> Was it very bad, that place they sent you to? Where, the school? No. Before they let me out, I was so hard you could bounce marbles off me. Yeah. I learned the hard way, too. Honky-tonks, cabarets. Yeah. For the good old counselor, huh? I saw him out there. Yeah. Still the same old good old counselor. I have to keep my eye on him. You seem kind of hard boiled yourself. Like to try bouncing off a few marbles? <laughs> well, that's the best way. Only way to get any place. Well, where do we go? Don't ask questions. Just put on your little bonnet. Here we go. You certainly don't give a girl much chance. No, I should say not. What's the matter, Chappie? Lost something? Oh, have you seen Miss Parker around? Yes, Mr. Wilson. She just went out with Mr. Hadley. Oh, excuse me. All the nerve, leaving me sitting here like a cold potato. <laughs> well, here we are, everybody out. But that's a police station. Sure, some of my best friends are cops. Come on. Well, what do you accuse me of things like that, boy? Yeah, but look what you did to me! Well, you make us all this trouble. Who would have been? Quiet, quiet! quiet. Will you listen to Lieutenant McLennan? If you want to press charges, madam, we'll hold your husband for the magistrate's court. Now, how'd this all happen? Well, he hit me with a great big pot. Oh, I did not. It was just a little skillet. <gasps> well, who started it? Uh, oh, I can't remember. Well, I can. When I come home, she started to Now, now wait a minute. Maybe you two had better go over there and sit down and talk this thing over. Yeah, now, why don't you do that, huh? Well, all right, all right. Guy starts pushing his wife around. That isn't assault, Tim. You ought to know that. Sure, I know. It's just matrimony. But I gotta get away with this time, sister. This girl stole my wallet. I was not minding my own business, Lieutenant McGlennan. McGlennan! Mike! Just a minute, lady. What's this all about? He doesn't remember me. Oh, don't be a chump, Mike. This is Mary Rogers. Don't you remember little Mary? Mary! Mary Rogers! Well. Hello, Mike. 
Where did you find this bundle of sunshine? <laughs> Don't forget, I saw her first. Wouldn't it be just my luck to have desk duty on a night like this? You're not going to let that spoil our reunion, are you? I should say not. You don't think I'd let you out alone with this hoodlum, do you? <laughs> Riley, take over. I'll change clothes and be back in a minute. You know, the only time he ever forgot he was a cop was when the station house burned down, and then he turned fireman. <laughs> you know, I think I'll phone Benny and have him put a bottle on ice. Can I use your phone, Riley? Sure. Thanks. Well, what do you think? <laughs> oh, Robert, I like it. Yeah, it must have cost plenty. Oh, wait till you see the inside. Of course, you, you've got to use your imagination. I got one of the young fellows who does some sets for Ziegfeld to do the decorating. A genius. See the gold leaf on the stairs, real marble. <laughs> How do you like the lights? They're beautiful. There's a light switch somewhere. No, here it is. <laughs> well, what do you say, Mike? You know what it looks like to me? What? A wave. Oh, still talking like a cop, huh? Let me tell you something, Lieutenant. The dough's gonna roll in this place like the tide at Coney Island. Yeah? Yeah. And just to help an old friend out, you know, for old time's sake, I, I'm gonna cut you in for a little chunk. That's so you won't have to go to the old cop's home and you get flat-footed and bald-headed. I wouldn't invest a plugged nickel. I'll probably raid this place a week after he opens it. Oh, he's gonna raid the place with my drag at headquarters? <laughs> no, his idea of getting someplace a free ride to Sing Sing. Oh, now, Mike, you know that you, you can't... Listen, do you know what his future's gonna be? In 10 years, with luck, he may be a captain. Then he'll have a little home in Flatbush, four kids and bad plumbing. That's an honest cop. Oh, right. At least I won't have a number for a name. No, I'll have a police funeral with a brass band that he won't be able to hear. Now, forget I ever knew a king horn by the name of Hand. Oh, is that so? Oh, now, boys, you've got to stop this <laughs> right this minute. <laughs> Could you beat it? She took us serious. Yeah, she took us seriously. <laughs> no, but really, I got a proposition for you, Mike. It's a... Hey, Ross, I've been looking all over for you. Well, John, come in. I have a chair. Well, I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine. This is Miss Vi Parker, Mike McGlennon, and John McGrady. How do you do? Alderman McGrady. Miss Parker, Mr. McGlennon, take a sack of chips and sit in. I don't want to intrude, but there's a couple of things I wanted to tell you. This is the man that fixes things in town, including murder. Hey, not murder. <laughs> well, you're all set to open. As far as the department is concerned, I just got the word. Everybody taken care of, huh? Well, there's a new lieutenant in the precinct, an honest Joe. But he knows he can't buck the machine, so you don't have to worry about him. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> That's the lieutenant. Ross, you should have told him. Oh, me. don't worry, John. We're working on him now. And when we bring him around, you'll have to make him a captain. You know me, kid. Well, I'd better run. Pleased to have met you, miss. Goodbye, John. Ross, you shouldn't have done that. Hey, wait a minute. I thought you were on my side. We've got to wake this guy up. Come on, we're going to have a little party. Mike, a little job. Unwrap the glasses. Well, I'm all set to open. You heard him. Yeah, I heard him. Is everything ready to roll? All I need now is an entertainer. You, uh, you don't know where I can find one, do you, Bob? No, I don't. You sure? Yes, I am. <laughs> well, let's not talk business. How about a little toast? Now that we're all together, here's hoping we'll always stick together. Forever. Say, we better do that sticking together right now. I thought I'd find you here. You know you've got another show to do? Some wine, Chappie? Just what do you think you're doing? I'm sorry, Chappie. I didn't realize the time. Never mind the act. You're working for me. Oh, wait a minute, Chappie. It wasn't her fault. I asked her. Be smart. Stay out of this. Get back to the place. Come on, take your hands off her. Bye, you. Oh. Run you both in for carrying a gun. Skip it, Mike. Bad publicity. Toss him out. OK, it's a fair for you. Come on. Good night, Chappie. Go on, get out of here. <laughs> What's so funny? You two. It's just like old times. <laughs> so that was a nice fellow you were working for. Were? Yeah, I told you I needed a great entertainer. Yeah? I found her. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> Say, Mike, I bet you don't remember this. Is that so? <laughs> Wait a 
the hatch. Sure, I wouldn't miss it. Let me know when you're ready, boys. <laughs> nice smile, Mr. Hadley. Hold up. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it comes out. Hey, hey boys. Mrs. Lawrence wants to see you. Thanks. Being a wine salesman must be nice work, Bob. Did you want to see me, Faye? The place is open now, honey. Relax. Oh, I can't. I'm too busy. I want to talk to you about that singer. I asked you not to put her on. Now, look, we went all through that last week. She certainly made a big hit that first show, didn't she? Not with me. Now, listen, Faye. Bob, buy a bottle of your best, will you? I think Faye needs a little cooling off. She's awfully good looking, Faye. Well, hello. Hello yourself. You know, people usually knock. I'm not people. I'm Faye Lawrence, Ross's partner. Oh, really? I uh, didn't know Mr. Hadley had a partner. Where do you think he got that roadster he's been sporting you around in? I'll get right to the point. I don't like your act. When I backed Ross, I told him I wanted our place to have class. Oh. I, uh, I suppose you mean I'm fired? You get the idea. We'll pay you off tonight. What is this? Oh, nothing. Your partner just gave me my walking papers. Didn't I tell you to keep your nose out of my business? Your business happens to have 35,000 of mine in it. That was a loan. It doesn't make you a partner. This is a good time to pay you off. Ross, you mean to say she loaned you $35,000? Brother, you certainly earned it. Why, you got a snipe. You ought to... You ought to what? Listen, Ross, honey, I only figured that Miss Parker was the type of act we wanted in the place. Thanks for the loan of your dough. Now, come on. Oh, take come your on. hands off me. You huh? can't get away with this, you cheap little gambler. I can't show you something. Oh, good evening, Miss Lawrence. Great night, ain't it? Mm, some people just can't stand prosperity. Oh, you really are a caveman. Yeah. That's the only way to handle a gal like that. Now, you, you're different. You gotta be sweetened. <laughs> you know, gentled up a bit. Wait a minute, Ross. You said you had every dime in the place. That's right. Where did you get $35,000 to pay her <laughs> off? Wait till she sees the date on that check. By the time it's good, there'll be thirty-five in the bank to cover it. It's lined up six deep at the table's end. <laughs> You really are a character. Yeah. We're a couple of characters. Ross, you're going to have trouble with her. What do you mean? Oh, a woman scorned, all that kind of thing, you know. Hey, wait a minute. You don't think she means anything to me, do you? <laughs> well, what difference would it make if she did? Well, I just don't want you to get the wrong idea. But, Ross, I only work here. <laughs> oh, let's forget it. How about celebrating tonight? Oh, I wish I could, but I, uh... I've got a date. Yeah, with who? Well, I... Well, here he is now. Oh, Michael, huh? So you're beating my time. What? Where are you taking her, you lucky stiff? Oh, I'm gonna take her to a place that's got yours beat a mile. With a change of decorations every season. Well, you see it, why it's beautiful. And the music. I can hear it now. Bags of penis, Tony. Show sure, fresh and hot. There you are. Thank you. How do you like the music? Central Park Symphony. I haven't heard it for years. Mary. Yes, Mike? Do you ever think of giving up this garter girl business and doing something else? Like what, for instance? Well, I don't know. Some girls like housekeeping. Offering me a job, Mike? No, it's just... Well, you know how I've been feeling about you since you came back. Oh, well, Mike, I... It isn't I... much of an offer. Being a copper's wife, maybe a little house in Brooklyn. Nothing exciting about it. Just two people caring so much for each other that nothing else in the world matters. You know, sometimes I think that's the only thing that's important. Two people being together like that. And then I remember Ma sweating over a washboard while the old man was out cadging drinks somewhere. I really think they were close together, too, but smelly tenements and not knowing where the next nickel was coming from kind of got in the way. Oh, Mike, I guess the bright thing to do is to get what you can while the getting is good. You sound like Ross. 
Yeah, I guess we are pretty much alike. Maybe you two would be better off together. I've been worrying about him, though, lately. He wants to take Manhattan in his fingers and spin it like a silver dollar. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, a hundred. That's nine thousand five hundred up to now, boss. We suddenly put it over, Roz. What's on your mind, Mac? Well, you couldn't have opened if I hadn't have pulled a few strings. Your cut isn't big enough, is that it? Now, let's keep it all nice and friendly, Ross. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I want it. I think I ought to get about 10% uh, more, don't you think? Oh, sure, sure, there's enough to go around for everybody. Now, don't give it another thought. I knew you'd take it that way, Ross. You're a white man if I ever saw one. Have a cigar, Mac. Uh, thanks. Uh, take the box, you might as well have a place to keep them. Thanks, Ross. See you soon. Good night, Ross. Good night, Benny. Benny, you see that guy? Sure, boss. I ain't blind. Remind me to do something about him around election time. Give him his papers, Jess. You take care of the voters in the 38. Spats, you handle the 36. I got you. Very careful, Butterfingers. Take it easy. Want to give it away? I got it. We'll take care of it. Hi, Ross. Hello, John. Well, how are the returns coming in? A little slow, but it's always like that in the morning. We got nothing to worry about. Oh, I'm sure we haven't. I want to thank you for the way you've come through in the campaign. You've been a big help. John, what's a friend for? <laughs> That's what I always think. Well, got a lot of calls to make. See you tonight at the celebration. All right, my man. Well, Eddie. Hello, Sandy. How are you? Pretty good. How's the kids? Oh, fine. That's good. Uh, look. Vote for Anderson. But the button says vote for McGrady. Never mind what the button says. Who's giving you the dough? Me or the button? Do as you're told and vote for Anderson. Okay, then. Oh, hello, Mac. How are you? Does your mother know you're out? Hi, Jack. Hello. Are you hitting Frank? Oh, Hi. Mike. Hi. Hello, Ross. See, so your man lost. Oh. No, my man won. What do you mean? Two beers. I thought that McGrady was a... I didn't ask you to meet me to talk about has -beens. Tonight marks a milestone for Ross Hadley and you, too. Thanks, Jim. Keep it. Thank you. What do you got on your mind? Well, we're going to take a little walk together after we've had our beer. Well, if it ain't the big gam 
Glenmore go. I'll accept that, Toby. Fill it up. Say, tell me you got the biggest place in town. Why don't you come up sometime? I'll let you make a little dough. Oh, uh, sure has the tenderloin to the tail, hasn't he, Mike? Yeah. Remember, once we tried to get him to take a job behind your bar. <laughs> Toby, I want to tell you Mike's the greatest pal a guy could have. Of course, he's a little dumb in the head, but I'm going to smarten him up. What's my good luck is going to be his good luck. <laughs> Wait a minute, Ross. Toby, I think I'm getting a cut. Uh, well, you listen to him, Toby. You know, he belongs in the Museum of Natural History next to the two-headed baby. <laughs> Don't let him rag you, Mike. Set them up again on me. Uh, excuse me. Thanks. The big glasses. Oh, Not for me. Oh, come on. Oh, this is all. Henry. Henry. Well, if it ain't our ex-alderman. What's on your mind, Mac? I'll show you what's on my mind. Pretend you're working for me and all the time double-crossing me for Anderson. Well, it was good business, Mac. You dirty, underhanded crook. You'll never turn on anybody again. <laughs> Made me laugh at the start. Ah, oh, don't make me cry, Mac. You got yours while it lasted, but you had to be greedy. Sorry, Mr. Grady, I'll have to take you in. Saw with a deadly weapon. No, 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 Mike, I won't press charges. How about taking that little walk? Buy the tramp a beer. Come on with me, Mike. Hey, what's the idea of bringing me to the police station? Well, I don't ask so many foolish questions. Come on. <laughs> Mary! You kept me waiting, Mike. Say, what is this? What are you two cooking up, anyway? Shall we, um, tell him? No, let him guess. <clears throat> Ross, how many times have I Anderson told you? Anderson just found out that you were a friend of mine. I had nothing to do with it. But I can't take this promotion. I haven't earned it. Oh, he hasn't earned it. He just saved my life, that's all. For that, the commissioner will probably break me. Come on, Pye, go to work on him. Gotta wake this chump up. Look, Mike, I know how you feel, but you can't buck a whole system. And it's for your own good. You know that. I can't do it, Mary. It's against everything I've ever believed in. Oh, no, Mike, it isn't. You deserve the job. And besides, there are a lot of things you want that this job can get for you. No strings attached? Mm-mm. All right, I'm sold. Well, now you're talking sense, Captain McGlennon. <laughs> Congratulations, Mike. Thanks. Thanks, Ross. Guess I could say I got something in my eye. <laughs> well, clear it up and look out the window. There it is, Mike. Little old New York. Did you ever see anything more beautiful? <laughs> and it's all ours. Just like we dreamed about when we were kids. Well, what about it? Sounds pretty risky. Even for 20,000? <laughs> You must be pretty burned with him to be offering that sort of cash. What have you got to laugh about? He's got most of your business. You'll be lucky if he don't get you closed. Don't rub it in. Bring the boys in, Danny. Yeah. Come on. Studs. All right. Hello, boys. Gibson and Franco. They're from Philly. Hi. Glad to know you. Have a cigar? No, no, thanks. Come here, boys. Did uh, Danny explain the layout to you? Yeah, this, uh, this Hadley guy. Yes, that's right. Now, every Friday night, he goes down to Toby's place to have a couple of beers with this copper pal of his, this uh, Captain McGlennon. Give him the dope, Danny. Sure. Look. Toby's is right on this corner, see? Gibson, you and me will be laying from down the block. You, Franco. You tell him on the way there, just in case he smells a mouse, see? Now, let's get this straight. I don't want no miss up, see? We never miss. Don't worry about us. Okay. Half the suckers come here to see you, so I think you ought to have a little bonus. And such a wonderful bonus. <laughs> Are you this kind to all your employees? No, just the beautiful ones. Ross, you... Messed up my makeup. 
You know, I have a show to do in 15 minutes. Well, you go right ahead. I've got a date myself. Huh? Friday night. Mm -hmm. Give my love to Mike. That I will. Shall I send him a little kiss? No, and you wipe that lipstick off. Else Benny will think I stabbed you. Why? Now, look, boss, I don't want to be no crepe hanger, but Chappie's been having a couple of strange rod men hanging around with him these last few days. Oh, he's going to get tough, huh? Well, the way you've been taking his play, everybody knows he's out to get you. Now, listen, Benny, someday I hope I have a real sickness. Then you can nurse me. Look after things when I'm gone. All right, and you be sure to look after yourself, do you hear? It's right over there, sir. Right. And in the second act, when she took her cape off. Come on, get out. I don't want to spoil that nice upholstery. What is this, a stick-up? You've been following me. One of Chappie's monsters, huh? Chappie? I don't even know him. Listen, I'm an honest citizen sitting here. Honest citizen, huh? I guess this must be a teething ring for your baby. Now start talking. Okay. Okay, I'll work for Chappie. They're laying for you up at Toby's. Let me go now, will you? Come on, get off. Bring it. Get me out. I hear they're after talking about building a new subway. Conversation, that's all it is. Another scheme to spend some old city's money. Hello, uh, Kelly? This is Tim Riley. Was that farmer in from Yonkers this evening? Oh, he left them, did he? White ones? Ah, uh, that's good. My wife wouldn't have a brown egg in her house. We ought to be along any second. I don't want to watch the other man. Don't shoot it! Gunshots! I was inside. Ross, do you know that man? No. Never saw the poor sucker before. There never was a finer boy than Tim Riley. I'd like to get my hands on the man that killed him. You'll get your wish, Lenny. We'll get every man in the police force to look for a guy with a slug in his leg. Yes, sir. Take it easy, Len. Take it easy. What happened to Franco? He was telling Hadley. I guess he got away as soon as he heard the shooting. Yes? It's Faye.
They got him. Good. Danny stopped a slug. From Ross? Nah, a cop. He came out of nowhere. He got Gibson and I got him. I'll have the money for you as soon as the bank opens in the morning. Must be Franco now. Better cover up that leg, Louis C. Hadley. Hello, Faye. Everything nice and cozy? What do you want? Well, it just came over me all of a sudden, Chappie, that Manhattan Island is getting a bit too crowded. Now, personally, I hate ferry boats. So I'm afraid it'll be up to you. I don't get you. Well, think it over and you will. I'd suggest you have a doctor take a look at that leg, Danny. There he is. He didn't have sense enough to stay away from the doctors. What's the rap? What do they mean, pulling me out of my hotel room without even a warrant or anything? What's the charge? Killing an officer named Riley. I don't know what you're talking about. I want to see my lawyer. You'll talk to us first. Take him out and make him talk. That's one job I'm going to enjoy. Get in there. Johnson will find out what was behind that fracas. One thing I know. Danny May's mixed up with a gambling racket. And Tim Riley died because of it. Lieutenant, call out the riot squad. We're going to close every gambling joint in the Tenderloin. It's your neck if you do, Captain. And tell them to bring their axes. and just ran to Chappie Wilson's. Smash the place to smithereens. Well, it's fine. I told you he'd learn fast. What's fine about it? Oh, well, don't be a chump, Benny. He's eliminating our competition. But you don't get it. They say he's gonna raid every joint in the tenderloin. <laughs> Will you stop worrying? He won't touch us. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. You've got to get this straight, Ross. Riley was killed last night on account of a gambling racket. Ah, oh, shut up. I have to ride with you, but I don't have to listen to your gab. I didn't mean to get you mixed up in this, Mary. I'm... Oh, that's perfectly all right. I just hope I'm wearing the right clothes to go riding with a cop. I wasn't quite sure what was the right thing. It was a smart double crush you built me up to. You even let me sink an extra 20,000 in the place last month. You don't think that I plan to close you up, do you? No, no, it just came over you all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm not worried. Anderson will hate this corpus me out of this mess before you got time to polish that badge. Listen, house hall. A friend of mine was captain here for a little while. Patrolman McGlennon. What do you mean, Clancy, have anything to report? Out here in the country? Yeah, Gopher just died of loneliness. Yeah, and the same to you, too. Yes, sir. Are you Michael McLennan, former captain of the Tenderloin Precinct? That's right. I've been sent to tell you that if you've learned to do as you're told, and if you'd like to make a piece of change, you may be able to get your job back as captain. Oh, I may, may I? 
Go back and tell your crooked friends I like it out here. If I catch your greasy face around here again, I'll bend this club over your head. Now get. Hey, what do you think you're doing? That's all right, Peters. Now, just a minute, McLennan. What's so funny? That was just a sort of test. I uh, had to make sure. I'm Thomas J. Dennis, special prosecutor for the governor's anti-crime committee. What's that got to do with me? The governor's decided it's time the state took a hand in straightening out this town. Frankly, I liked your one-man attempt to clean up the tenderloin. Yeah, it's done me a lot of good. Well, uh, how would you like to work as my special investigator? With full powers to finish what I started? That's about it. Where do we begin? It's up to you. I know you're a big shot, Alderman, and you can get in your share. Now, what are you going to do about this? Yeah, John. Our places are closed tighter than a Blue Point oyster. These things occur periodically. I'm sure we can avert any really disastrous consequences. I know you went to Harvard, but don't give us any of those educated words you learned up at Cambridge. What happens? Now, don't be an oil can. This is the fourth committee we've had in three years. Just where did the rest of them get? The rest of them didn't have McLennan. He's got a point there, Chappie. In a couple of more weeks, these yellow sheets won't have anything more to print. The public will lose interest, and the governor will tie a can to that committee. Yeah, maybe. Just let's see what happens, eh? We'll meet again next week. Yeah, you ought to get Ross Hadley. He's a smart operator. All right, I'll do that. See you later, boys. Goodbye. Good, huh? Chappie. We've been getting that. You know, there's double dealing stuff. Well, you don't want to worry too much about these things. Politicians have to make a reputation, you know? Goodbye. See you all later. Wasn't I right about that committee? This one won't dissolve for lack of public interest, Wilson. Why not? McLennan's preparing a hot story for the papers as soon as interest slackens. A murder charge against you and Miss Lawrence. What? What are you talking about? Riley's shooting. I have a certain friend in Mr. Dennis's office. He just gave me the information this morning. So they sweated a the confession out of your bright boy, Danny. Well, now, don't put this on me. So far, Danny's only talked to McLennan. How much, I couldn't say. Well, we've got to do something about this. If you could discredit McLennan in some way, before he places his charges with the grand jury, you'd save yourself, and at the same time, you'd probably explode the entire committee. Freeman? I don't like the expression. It's pretty steamed up about that two-bit warbler of Ross's by Parker. Sometimes even a cold proposition like McLennan can be handled through a dame. I'll get in touch with Yellow Gloves Weldon. Yes, well, just add something for yourself, my good chap, and put it on my chip, will you? Nothing doing. Toby says no more credit. Well, you can't be serious. I mean, after all the business I bring in? Oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. If you're serious about it, naturally, I'll... I'll I could have sworn I brought my wallet with me. Well, you mind. could, could you? Yes. It's the last time you'll come in here and order a drink and not pay for it. Well, just wait. a minute, bartender. What do you want? Take his uh, bill out of this. Well, thank you, sir. I can see that you're a gentleman of the first rank. Quite all right. Will you join me in a drink, sir? Well, it would be a privilege. Mr. Mr. Weldon's the name. Mr. Weldon, of course. Your change. Oh, just keep that, my good friend. May I help you? Very <coughs> I, I should like to explain this rather embarrassing situation, Mr. Weldon. Quite all right. Quite all right. Oh, it is. Uh, shall I pour? Yes, if you will, please. And after all, you can imagine the indignity to a man of my position. I made the girl what she is. She owes everything to me. A man like you should always have money in his pocket. My friend, I... 
I feel that I can call you my friend. To the grave. To the grave. Thank you. That's very sweet. I, um, I have a little business proposition that might interest you. It requires a fine, dignified man of your type. Well, there's a pile of cash in it. You wouldn't ever have to ask your daughter for another nickel. Oh. Speak on, my friend. I'm definitely interested. Why don't you let me go? The place is closed. There's no sense paying me a salary just for sticking around. You've got a contract. Work it out. I know, but they're not going to let you open. Well, I'll worry about that, kid. Why don't you let me talk to Mike and see if... I'm asking no favors from cops. All right, all right. Oh, look, boy. We both got the willies. Let's give this town the bounce and have some fun, huh? Will you stop thinking about Mike? He lives in a different world. You wouldn't last in it a week. Now, we're both looking for the same thing. We need action. It ain't no blood to sit around and mope. Well, I'm getting fed up. If oh, that's sure. What you now, look, boy. I got a good piece of dough stashed away, see? The two of us can go down to Florida, and then when we come back, this will all be over. And we can open again bigger and better than ever. What do you say? <laughs> well, I don't know what I. Don't think about it. I'll meet you here tonight, huh? It was my whole life savings, every cent I had in the world. How can I go back and tell my family? How much money did they get? $10,000. I tell you, Mr. McGlennon, no respectable visitor is saved in this city. That's what this commission is trying to do, clean up the town. Now, anything you could tell me that might help? Have you a description of these men? Yes, one of them has a little mustache, is always well-dressed, and wears yellow gloves. Yellow gloves? Yes, he introduced his partner as a uh, Mr. Richardson. What this Mr. Richardson look like? Well, he was a medium-sized man, about 60. Dressed very fancy, and talked with a lot of fancy words, too. One time, I think the other man called him Roberts or Rogers, something like that. Of course. Well, I don't think he meant to. It was just a slip of the tongue. <laughs> and uh, McLennan? Uh, he took it like a mackerel, hook, line, and sinker. Well, that's <laughs> fine, that's fine. Well, well, going somewhere, my dear? Yes, I'm going on a short vacation. But I'll keep sending you your allowance. It may interest you to know that I no longer need your handouts. Well, that does interest me very much. What have you been up to? Now, never you mind. But there are some people who appreciate my value in a business way. Hello? Mr. McGlennon is here, Miss Parker. He said he wants to see you. Will you tell Mr. McGlennon that I can't see him right now? She said she's busy. She can't see you. Listen, Murray, I've got to see you. It's about your father. It's important. All right, Mike. Come on in. What does Mike want? Suppose you tell me. Oh, my, something must have gone wrong. Look, now, Mary, you've got to get me out of it. You're my child. Oh, you, know, you will right. protect Look, me. Go back there and talk. Hurry up. Come in, Mike. Hello, Mary. Is your father here? What's he done? He's got mixed up with the yellow gloves welded. They flim flammed a man from Akron, Ohio, out of $10,000. Oh, the fool. Sorry, Mary. I'm going to have to take him in. Oh, Mike, you can't do that. You can't send that crazy old man to jail. Mike, if ever I've meant anything to you, get him out of this. Mary, you don't know what you're asking me to do. Look, Mike, I've worked for him ever since I was a little kid. I've, I've watched over him. I can't let him down now. And you can't let me down. You said you loved me. Remember? Tell him to come in. All right, come on in. Mike wants to talk to you. Mike, it wasn't my fault. Oh, now, don't let him get me, will you? Because I'd die in jail, you know that. You're listen, no Mike. good. You never have been. Why should I give you a break? Oh, please, listen. They talked me into it. I couldn't help it. I thought I... Stop your I... whining. Mary's been supporting you since she was a kid. I ought to do a fair and lock you up for good. Then you're not going to help it? Who said I wasn't? 
You gonna cough up that money or aren't you? You haven't got any right to shove me around. What about the money? How do I know you'll give it back to Balser? Why, you... all right, all right. I'll give it to you. If I do, you ain't gonna make any complaint, is that it? Where's the money? Okay. It's all there, every cent. If I catch you hanging around Rogers again, I'll tear you limb from limb. Murray Hill, 5598. Hello, Chappy. Yeah, like a charm. What do you mean, was it marked? Every last cent. You bet. Here are the serial numbers. You got a pencil? You agree to drop all charges. Is that correct? Well, yes, indeed, Mr. McClendon. My only interest is to get my money back. All right, there you are. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. McClendon. You've no idea what this means to me. When I came to New York, I had no idea. Out where I live, you can trust people. You better put that in the bank. All ready to go? Yeah, I'm all ready. What's the matter, boy? Oh, the old man got himself in a jam. Jam? What kind of a jam? I'll fix it. No, Mike fixed it. Well, then everything's all right. Did you send your truck down? Oh, boss. I got some good news for you. How many times have I told you not to bust in here like this? But this is good news. I just run into Yellow Gloves Weldon. Over at Skins, he's stewed to the ears. And he's bragging how they just framed Mike McLennan. Framed Mike? We haven't any time to listen to gossip, you know. But this ain't gossip. They planted some mock money on him. Then took a picture of him paying off some guy by the name of Bowser to square a flim-flam case against old man... All right, old man Rogers here. Yeah, that's right. They're gonna give the picture and Bowser's statement to the newspaper tomorrow. That'll put the kibosh on the Glennon and the rest of the committee, see? So that saves our necks. Yeah, it'll certainly do that, Benny. Sure it will. I... Oh, can I help you? No, wait outside, man. Okay. Well, I guess you won't go away now. No, that's right, Benny, thanks. So the whole thing was a frame-up. I had nothing to do with it. Honest, I didn't. Mike gave up everything he believed in, for me. Well, it serves him right for being so dumb. Look, Ross, Mike can't stand another break like this. He'll be through completely. You're in love with a guy, aren't you? I said I'd go to Florida, didn't I? All right, all right, don't get sore. I got a couple of things to do. What about Mike? I don't know. Anyway, I can't bother about that. The boat sails in two hours. engineered that frame, Chappie Wilson? Yeah, sure. Him and Faye Lawrence. Yeah. They framed you, Mike. You'll have to do something quick. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. I'll call you back. change the combination on that safe. Wait a minute, Hadley. That evidence does you as much good as it does me. We can make a deal. Not this time. Don't be a fool. He's just a cop. That's where you're wrong, Chappie. This cop's name is McGlennon. You're not gonna get out of here with that stuff. <laughs> you're not gonna stop me. Always were a rotten shot, Chappie. Get him out of here, Charlie. Get this 
place closed up. Call headquarters, will you? Hello, give me the police. Well, Ross, I thought you were never coming back. Well, Mr. Bo. Oh, forget it. You're not going. Ross, what's the matter? Nothing. Everything's fine. I'm just going alone, that's all. Ah, oh, that was a crazy idea. You know I'm not the kind of a guy to get tied up with a gal. Why are you doing this? Because I do what I want. You're in love with Mike anyway. Marry the guy. I just phoned him about... Yeah? Well, I'm sorry I won't be here for the wedding, so I... I brought you both a little present. Go on, look at it. It's kind of expensive, but the, the best is none too good for my friends. Oh, hello, Mike. Mike, Ross has all the evidence. Well, the whole frame-up is a complete bust. Sure, tomorrow you'll be the biggest guy in town. I wish I could be here to celebrate. Wait a minute, Ross. You're just making it tougher for me. Well, what do you mean? Chappie's dead. Shot. I found this line alongside the body. Well, so what? Maybe the guy was taking music lessons. Sorry, Ross. I'd rather cut off my right arm, but I'm still a cop. I gotta take you in. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but I got a boat to make. Got the tickets and everything. Well, ain't you gonna wish me bon voyage? Ross, you're not going. You won't stop me. Goodbye. Mike. Ross, stop! Goodbye, Mike. Happy shot you. Yeah? At least. I was a big man, Mike. While I lasted. I told you I'd have the tenderloin by the tail. And I ain't ending up in any electric chair, Mike. Remember, like my old man always said. I'll bet his ghost is gonna laugh. Move along, miss, before I run you in for loitering. Oh, Mike, it startled me. Daydreaming again, eh, Mrs. McLennan? No. I was, I was just thinking about the time we sat here and talked about Ross, remember? I was thinking about him today. He finally sent Faye Lawrence up the river. Peanuts, boys? Thanks. Tony, give him a bag of peanuts. Oh. Keep right on playing. 